Now let's understand the simplest and the common method used by the attackers to gain the initial access of the victim device. The simplest one is the malware. So malware is again a term which is made up out of two different terms. The first one is the malicious and second one is the software. It means malware stands for the malicious software that will perform unintentional operation on the victim's device. It could be data corruption, it could be data encryption, it could be data deletion, it could be their recording their keystrokes, recording their screen, recording their mic, camera, it could be anything. But performing any sort of malicious action is generally considered under a malware if it's performed by a software. Simple case. Now malware have their own different categories and all those categories are defined as categorized by their behavior. It means there are different malwares that perform in a different behavior in a different manner. So on the basis of their behavior we categorize malware into different categories. The first one is the virus. So virus is again a simple software that attach itself with a legitimate software like for example if we take the office 365 example suppose you want to download the office 365 but you don't have a license key so what you will do is you simply look out for a crack version of office 365 where you don't have to enter the registration key right to download the crack version you will go to some third party website third party applications where you will get the crack version of it now there are two common methods that can be used to crack the software itself. The first one is if the key is somewhere located inside the software itself. If the check, if the let's say you have, whenever you enter a key, if the key is checked on the local system, like there is no server interaction for the key verification. If the key is verified on the local system, then the software can be cracked by reverse engineering you can easily reverse engineer the software and you can identify that what are the different keys already available inside the executable itself right and later on you can use those keys for the authentication for the activation of the software now for example in this case let's say we download the office 365 from a third party website and it says that you will get a get a crack version for free you don't have to do any activation you don't need to buy anything and whenever you download this kind of software you always end up with a malicious software right with this office 365 it will work as office 365 no issue but with this office 365 the website usually attach a second software which is usually called as the virus and when you execute this office 365 file it will execute both the software the original office 365 and the second one is the virus both will get executed and then virus will do its work and virus are usually known for their data corruption their data removal part and they automatically replicate themselves in the different part of your system so virus will corrupt your data will delete your data and they can perform some different actions as well depending on the coding that is performed by the attacker now after the virus the second category that we generally work with is the worms now worm again these are mainly delivered by the email attachments for example you get a email attachment it says like you are getting a job offer or this kind of thing it will attach a pdf file it will look like a pdf file it will look like an image file but when you open it when you download that file and when you exec open it it will execute a malicious software inside the device now these kind of softwares are usually known for their replication they usually replicate your they usually replicate themselves inside your system and they can also migrate from one system to another system as well right so this is what a generally worm known for they don't corrupt your data they don't delete your data but they can be used to get the lateral movements so they can give you the access to the victim device and then they can replicate themselves from the first system to the second system for these things the worms can be used after worms, the third one that we work with is the ransomware. 
So ransomware is a pretty simple software that only perform the encryption. But if the encryption is performed without the proper permission, without the proper authorization, for example, here you download the Office 365, the crack version of Office 365, and let's say you start using it. But after a day or two, it will start encrypting all of your data, all of your file. And if the data is important to you, you may need to decrypt the data to access the files. If the data is not important, then it will not make much effect on you. But if the data is very, very crucial, very, very important to you, you need the decryption key to get your data back. And if you don't have any backup of the data, in that case as well, you need the decryption key to get your data back. But if you have the backups, you can easily restore it. You don't have to worry about the data. But ransomware are simple software that encrypt your data with the public key. They work on asymmetric algorithm like they can use RSA 512 or 102 for kind of algorithm and they will encrypt it with the public key. Now, to get your data back, all you need is the decryption key, which is the private key. And to get the private key, you have to pay the extortion money or the ransom. If you just go to the browser and search here for, let's say top 10 ransomware attacks, we can see these are the few common ransomware that you can work with. Like WannaCry is one of them, Patia, Serb, they are different again. There are multiple ransomwares available on the market that you can deal with, that you may have to deal with. Now, if you just go with this report, which is published by NCC Group, and they said that there are 434 attacks in July 2023, and we may get uh, like in the 2017 itself, the victim paid around $5 billion in ransom. Just in ransom, the companies lost $5 billion in 2017. And by 2031, they may be increased by $265 billion. Right? And if you go with the list again, the colonial pipeline attack, they have to face they get a loss of 4.4 million because of this dark side ransomware. If you scroll down, you may get few extra results. You may get few extra victim list as well, right? Which is Maersk is one of the largest shipping container industry leader, and they face a loss of around 300 million dollar because of the ransomware attack. And the ransomware name was not bad, yeah. So this kind of ransomware will also affect the organization and in exchange organization face a big loss. Now after this ransomware there are few other malwares as well. Let's go with those as well. The fourth one that we will work with is the spyware. Now spywares are the common ransomware that are the common malwares not ransomware. Spywares are the common malwares that will record that will only extract the data from the victim's device they will not perform any lateral movement they will not migrate from one system to another one the only thing is they will only extract the data from the victim itself they will not harm their data they will not harm their files they will not perform much of the action the only thing is they will record the keystrokes they will record their mic their camera and their screen to get information about the victim what they are doing where, where they are logging what credential they are using what they are talking about what they are discussing all these things right these kind of actions are performed by the spywares now spyware is a common club under the spyware we can also categorize two different malwares as well the first one is keylogger now keylogger is again a simple malware which only records your keystrokes it will not do anything else it will only and only record your keystrokes that you enter through your keyboard for example you are logging inside your 
Gmail account, you are logging inside your net banking, you are logging inside your Google account, Facebook account, Instagram account, any account, right? Anything that you write through your keyboard will get recorded and will be sent to the attacker. That okay, this particular user write these different values, these different sentences, they press these different keystrokes on this particular application. For example, when you use the Google Chrome, the application name will be there and the keystrokes that you wrote will be there with the proper timestamp, right? So these kind of things are usually done through these key loggers. Other than key loggers, you may also face the adwares as well. So adwares are again pretty simple application. The only thing is they will show you ads to generate the revenue. For example, let's say we are playing a game and let's say we are playing a simple cricket game and on those games we have to watch few ads to keep continue to keep watching to keep playing that particular game these kind of things are usually done to get revenue to earn more and more revenue from the application developers also add the adwares inside the application right they don't harm the victim data but they usually affect the user as well right they will show you ads in your free screen they will also show you ads in the application as well right depends how they are application coding right if the application is programmed to work in the background and then show you ads you can categorize them as the adware where you will get ads on different applications as well suppose you are working with your gmail and you get a pop-up ad from the third party application Right. So these kind of softwares are usually known as adwares. This could be the case for your mobile phone. This could be the case for your softwares, for your computer devices, your laptops as well. Now, after adwares, let's go with one more category. That is the rootkit. Again, rootkit is a complete branch where they hide themselves inside a more deeper layer of operating system like for example there are different types of rootkit suppose the first one is the bootloader rootkit it means they can hide themselves inside the bootloader of the operating system right the second type is the firmware rootkit where they can hide themselves inside the hardware firmware right the fourth type is rootkit where they will hide themselves inside the user or the system files and system process or the user process as well and the fourth type is the kernel level rootkit where they will hide themselves inside the os kernel right so these are the few common types of malwares that you may have to deal with or that you will deal with now after that part let's just understand these are the common attack cases like how you can attack or how you may be attacked right now the case is how you gonna defend with all these so for just to deal with the malware the simplest application that we work with is the antivirus right now antivirus is a pretty simple application that scan all your files all your application for the behavior like how the application is behaving what files they have what are the signatures of those files and on the basis of that it will give you the results that the file or the application is legitimate or not now, let me give you a simple example for that. I'm going to this virus total platform on virustotal.com itself. And for example, let's say I'm uploading a file. In the previous sessions, we created this execute.sh file, which has a pretty simple script. It has a single line script, echo and Siddharth Samwan, a simple pretty line script. If I execute this one as let's say, I want to scan this file that it's a malware or not. You can do the same for all of your files that you upload, that you download from the third party websites. You can also do the same for your URLs as well. You can scan the different URLs. You can scan the different downloaded files on the virus total just to verify that the file is valid, is legitimate or not. And the file is infected or not, right? For all that, they will create the hash value of the file and then pass it to different antivirus software which will give you the result that the file is infected or not right if you see that the file is infected you can simply delete the file 
or you can avoid executing that file in the host machine or you can just scan it inside your virtual machine after that part you can also scan the urls as well in the vmware and the simple case is they always work on the basis of these hash values so antivirus software works on two different scenarios on two different mechanism the first one is the signatures now signatures again the the general free software the free antivirus that you get they always work on the basis of signatures they will not analyze the application in the real time on the running phase right what they do is they simply create hash values for different algorithm for different files for example let's say in my file in my execute.sh file they will create the md5 or sha256 basis on the database that they are carrying if the antivirus software is carrying the database for sha256 or let's say md5 or both they will calculate the hash of the file and then they will analyze it they will compare it within the db just to verify that the database has that particular signature or not if the database has the signature the file will be considered as malicious otherwise the file is good to go now the second scenario the second method that is antivirus use to verify it is the behavior in case of behavior your file will be executed in a sandbox environment where they will analyze the different functions how the function is working what functions are initialized on the time of execution and what functions are used in the file itself on the later phase as well but these signature based and behavior based antivirus can be easily bypassed through the different techniques used by the attackers for example they can use the obfuscation now obfuscation cryptors or encoders is a simple program simple software that change the application code itself like you can encrypt the application code and you can attach a decryptor with the application for example you write a simple malware script you encrypt it with let's say aes256 with your custom key and you attach a decryption script with it when the file will be executed it will automatically decrypt the actual malware and gives you the actual malware and execute the malware itself right in the same manner you can decode or you can encode your file into different character sets like we see in the previous session for the base64 for the sky for utf but these are the common used encoders other than these we have few others encoders available as well which we can use for the encoding part as well other than these obfuscator and the cryptor part attackers can also use 